Hi, this is Lauren Schoenberg coming to you in July 2023, and we're about to listen to the second half of a three-hour radio show that I put together back in 1987 on WKCR in New York, uh, dedicated to the music of the wonderful trombonist Jack Jenny, a magical name back in the big band era, and among trombonists to this day, he's kind of an idol. Uh, On the show... My two guests were one of Jack Jenny's greatest disciples and much beyond that, a wonderful person and a great trombonist in his own right, my dearest friend, Bobby Pring. And also, Bobby brought along his friend, uh, Jack Jenny's widow, Bonnie Lake. And Bonnie Lake was a songwriter. She wrote Sandman that Benny Goodman recorded. She recorded vocals with Artie Shaw's band. She was a businesswoman. She was a producer, songwriter, uh, a very active force in showbiz uh, and great musicians for a long, long time. And the only thing that I regret listening to the show now is that I didn't snag her for a series of shows about her own career and what she had done. But nonetheless, this is a, an interesting window into Jack Jenny. I can't find the rest of the broadcast. If I do, I will share it when and if that time comes. And all I'll say is listening to it almost 40 years later is that I just wish I had been a better interviewer back in those days. But nonetheless, uh, most of the talk is theirs. And there's some glorious music and at least one performance uh, that you won't find anywhere else but on this old radio show. So let's go back to 1987. And the topic at this particular moment in the broadcast was Jack Jenny's good friend and someone he recorded with quite a bit, Bunny Berrigan. So thanks for listening. Nine on your FM uh, dial. It's one thirty-five, and again, we're talking with Bonnie Lake about Bunny Berrigan. He was so modest, just so unassuming, mm-hmm. until he stood up to play, and the man <laughs> was in total command. He played with such, but they all did. Uh, that whole group that you just played, they all had such authority. Everybody knew what they were doing, and they all had one mind. When they work together. Mm-hmm. And you heard it. You can hear that. Bobby Pring, now I'll ask you any any reflections on Bunny Bergen. Did you get to see Bunny? I know that you were just coming into the music business about the time that he... Unfortunately, no. I never did see him. I wish I had him. Uh, I got to see a lot of bands around that, uh, that time, you know, when he had the, the uh, 42 orchestra. But he never played in my area. And uh, by the time I got on the road, uh, Bunny had left us, so uh, I never did get to see him in person. Of course, I heard him on a lot of records. He was, uh, as, as Bonnie said, in command. He had a gorgeous uh, sound, and, uh, that's that drive and imagination and the uh, ability to execute whatever he thought up. And he thought up a lot of great, great ideas. Yeah. Man was a master. Yeah, Bonnie. Did Jack and Bunny get a chance to work together a lot, or was it mostly confined to the odd meeting together? I think mostly like this. Bunny didn't do. Was not primarily a studio musician mm-hmm. um, that I remember. Uh, he wasn't on the sessions much. He mm-hmm. was on some. Mm-hmm. In, uh, you know, at CBS and NBC and. Mostly it was in recording and and like that. Mm-hmm. Of the folks of this clique of studio musicians who were doing so much work at that time, uh, were there any of them that were especially friends of Jack Jenny's? I mean, his All his his running buddies, you know. All of them. His so, closest friends were Carl Chris and Larry Binion. Mm-hmm. They were a threesome. Larry Binion, like that, you know. And Benny didn't laugh, you know. And, uh, and I said, what did I say? He said, let me tell you, he says, Larry Binion was a hell of a tenor player. Yeah. He says around New York when he was in Ben Pollock's band, late 29, 1930, he was someone you had to contend with. And then later on he played all the flute. He was one of the first guys who was a great flute player and a great doubler and did all this and all that. So some name from a discography to me turned out to be a, a true giant, someone like Larry Binion, you know, a marvelous well, well-respected player. As we forge ahead with uh, Jack Jenny's discography here, you have to tell me about this because I don't know anything about it. It says here Jack Jenny theme, then I'll get by Marion Thompson vocal, and it had to be you. 
October 27th, 1936. That's all before my time. Okay. Well, I don't know if these would be. I don't. I don't know if the, Bobby's giving me a. I don't know. <laughs> well, I know he had a little band. I think in yeah. the famous store. Okay. So we. Or the or the Onyx. I'm trying uh, to think if these would be commercial recordings, whether and these he would had be a, a small transcriptions. Band then. Yeah. So huh. This might have been part of that. Mm-hmm. Is it a? But were these records? You, you you'd know about them if they were records. I think so. So so they may not they may not have been Vocalion records. These were not Vocalion. Oh. I don't know what label they were on. Ah, it doesn't okay. say there. No, it doesn't. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I, I can find out for you. Okay. Well, let's listen to them. Some rare and some great Jack Jenny. Let's let's listen to it and then we'll get a, a reaction from our very special guests again, Bonnie Lake and Bob Pring. <laughs> Listening to some rare records here, and we, we seem to have stumped the experts. Uh, <laughs> may, maybe they're uh, transcriptions or something like I that. I think they are. I think that this is because it's a big date. They have a full string section there. Yeah. So I'm inclined mm -hmm. to think that he did a whole transcription date there. Yeah, yeah, because it it, it wouldn't be a radio broadcast because they'd have announcements. I'm sure mm -hmm. some, some somebody would be would be saying something about it. Well, anyway, this is very rare Jack Jenny from October 1936. Let's get back so we don't miss any more trombone. Thank you. 
keep in the pretty. in the background a little bit this Andre Castellanis version of Mary Had a Little Lamb. We'll listen for the trombone. I'll Get By, It Had to Be You, and a beautiful theme featuring the trombone, unknown origin, except the fact that we have these, recording, these recordings, courtesy of the private collection of Bonnie Lake, who's Mrs. Jack Jenny. And again, thank you so much, Bonnie, for your, your time and sharing these very rare and marvelous recordings with us. Oh, it's lovely to hear Jack. Yes. It's 13 minutes before the hour of 2 o'clock. You're listening to WKCR FM in New York. 89.9 on your FM dial. Lauren Schoenberg here again with Bonnie Lake and the marvelous trombonist and Jack Jenny of File, if you don't mind me calling you that, uh, Bobby Pring. Cool. And uh, Bobby is, uh, should mention, so visible on the New York jazz scene. Uh, want just tell the folks about a couple of those steady gigs you're doing in case they want to come and say hello. Uh, you're doing a steady, was it Friday at the Blazer? Or? Friday at the Blazer with... Uh Kathy Chamberlain's band. This is at the Red Blazer, which is 46th Street, yeah. between 8th and 9th Avenues. And Wednesday at the Cajun. The Cajun. It's the mm-hmm. 8th Avenue, but the 16th. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, on the f- Friday night, uh, band is uh, clarinet players, <coughs> Clarence Hutchin Rider from the oh, uh, yes. Casaloma band, yes. who incidentally w- was. Uh, uh, Jack's roommate on the Austin Wiley band. Told really? Me. When Jack came on the band, it was uh, Clarence's roommate. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. That's Bobby Pring. Again, P R I N G, Bobby Pring. The name I couldn't think of was the first band he ever worked that he ever worked with was Art Brown and his novelty boys. Art Brown and his novelty boys. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. mm. God. <laughs> All right. Again, we're just having a nice, relaxed afternoon, hoping that the, you're enjoying it as much as we are. We've gotten some lovely phone calls. Again, just spending a nice afternoon with some beautiful music by the trombonist Jack Jenny. And I can tell you that we're definitely not going to finish by 3 o'clock, so I would like to invite both Bob and Bonnie back. If you're free, I'll be back on in two weeks and uh, check your calendar. And if you're free, please, you have to come back because we cannot leave this undone. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue with Jack Jenny in two weeks. But we still have, don't worry, we still have another hour and... 10 minutes to go, but at this rate, I know that we're not going to get finished, and that's good. We're going to spend a lot of time with this music. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we move ahead here. Now, here next is a very interesting session that um, is going to require a little bit of uh, me breaking all the equipment here to get over to the tape machine. Uh, A relatively unknown session that I discovered last week, and I see here that some other discographer also knew about. I mentioned it to you on the phone, the variety session of uh, drummer boy johnny williams oh yeah and uh, they're very well recorded and we're going to get to those in just a moment but in the meantime while i'm getting the tape together uh i'll ask uh, bonnie to tell us about the uh what was it that made jack want to have a band to become a leader uh many people i know didn't want the headaches of of putting a band together what was it that made him decide to leave being a side man and, and get a band that's what he wanted all the time. It was what he wanted. Oh, yes. Absolutely. He wanted to be a leader all his life. And really didn't want to settle for anything else. He hated being a sideman. Mm. Well, I didn't know that. How did it actually come about? Do you know the how it actually happened? Well, you see, I didn't get into it until 1939. Right. He was already... And he already had his orchestra and wanted me to work with him. Yeah. All right, well, I guess we'll just have to... Uh, piece it together someday maybe from some of the contemporary music magazines or might you know maybe a, a book booking agency was behind him or something like that he must have had some support i imagine all although on, on the other hand i know those studio guys were making a mint in the third they certainly <laughs> they were they really he took three months a year off and went home and home was mason city uh, or no where was home at that point Des Mo- i think des moines at that time all right, well, I think we're ready to go to the record session, the uh, l- little-known session. I can tell you that Babe Russin is the tenor saxophonist. Oh, yeah. I don't have the rest of the personnel here. I don't think I got so A many. good friend. Well, his brother played wonderful. Jackie played wonderful. Jack Russin, too, yes. right. Jack yeah, is still around. Is he? In the yeah. West Coast, yeah. I, I used to hang out with him at the old Hollywood Ranch Market. After hours, it stayed open 24 hours. You know, mm. some of the musicians used to come by after the job. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, Bay was like his kid brother, I understand. He started playing right. and was 18 years old and all that stuff. Yeah, good player. Too. Yes. Well, here he is, uh, pre-Tommy Dorsey and pre-Benny Goodman. Uh, I guess he had just been, he'd left Fred Rich's orchestra because I know he's on some Fred Rich recordings in 36. But this is 37, Babe Russin with Jack Jenny and a fine drummer uh, named John Williams. And we'll hear Where's My Sweetie Hiding and Little Old Lady. And... Uh, here they are. Thank you. 
One of the lesser known record dates of the 1930s. 1937, June 15th, 1937, we heard Where's My Sweetie Hiding and Little Old Lady. There's some in- interesting input here about the drummer there, Johnny Williams. Mm. Uh, wonder if we could show with Bobby Pring and then go to Bonnie Lake. Tell us a little, tell us a little bit about, about the family and what happened. Oh, John, uh, John Williams studied with my uncle, uh, Eddie Andre, who was from New Bedford, but uh, spent most of his playing career in Boston. Uh, he studied with, with George Lawrence Stone, the uh, famous drummer who had the uh, well-known drum method out, and Eddie studied with him, and he in turn had quite a few pupils uh, Besides his job, uh, he he worked for quite a while at the Metropolitan Theater there in the pit band, which was kind of a uh, Radio City music hall setup. It's a very similar programming. When are we talking about chronologically here? Pardon? W- uh, what years are we talking oh, about? Oh, this here? is uh, early, mid-30s. Yeah. 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 Uh, what did Johnny Williams do in, in New York? Was he a studio drummer, or did he... Uh do you know anything about John, John himself? What? Yeah. No, just I know, I'm familiar with his work with uh, Raymond Scott Quintet. Raymond Scott, he was, Scott the, he was uh, with the right. original drummer with that. Right. And Bonnie, you uh, I saw have Johnny some Williams very Williams on all the different record dates and radio shows and everything like that. He he worked all the time, and he was a marvelous drummer, and he was one of the few drummers who really could carry a big band. Yeah. He could keep really keep it together. I think, of course, the greatest drummer of all was Davy Tuff. Yes, amen. You know, nobody liked Davy. Uh, Johnny Williams' young bo- uh, son, when he was a young boy, started studying with Bobby Van Epps and ultimately is now mm-hmm. the conductor of the Boston um, Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. That's another fascinating musical family is the Van Epps family. Oh, they're fascinating. Well, there was Fred Van Epps, yes. George Van Epps, yes. and uh, Bobby Van Epps. Mm-hmm. Four. Four brothers. Oh, there was another one, too. Yeah. yeah. And they were all consummate kind of musicians. Well, we know about George Van Epps and the seven-string guitar. What, what, can, what can you tell us about the other Van Epps brothers? Both the other brothers. One was a, a saxophonist. And the other one was, uh, I forget his instrument, but he was an arranger. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Bobby Van Epps was at MGM for years. He played in bands and, and things like that. Bobby Van Epps was an incredible arranger and played piano to make you cry. And um, was at MGM for years, uh, orchestrating mm-hmm. for motion pictures and sc- underscoring. Yeah. A, a shame because he should have been playing. Should have been playing and, more and, and re- being recorded. Yeah, he really had something to say. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, he did. Uh, he retired and said he wasn't going to play anymore, and I just had a fit. So he started recording uh, some things, and he's uh, but three albums have come out before he passed away. And I'm so glad that those got down. Yes. I remember when I went over to his place in California. Yes. And he had that, that uh, rig that he had put together to play 78 right. records with the uh, special t- uh, tone arm on there. Well, he invented uh, an arm, you yeah. know, that rode into the rode the grooves differently and didn't wear your records out. It was amazing, Lauren. He uh, he played seventy eights on that on that rig, and it come out like, uh, wow! <laughs> really? Yeah, there are things that that you wouldn't hear otherwise, but yeah. they were on the record. But the whole Van Epps family was like that. Their f- father was the, the incredible, you know, banjo player and uh, watchmaker, and they oh, and uh, uh, watchmaker. The, mm-hmm, and the train that George built is the size of a dime, a steam engine. And that there's no, no, nothing like it in the world. Mm. I don't know where they're going to put that. I hope someone doesn't step on it or something. <laughs> oh, it is, it's just sheer genius. <laughs> yeah. All of them. Yeah, yeah. A wonderful family. Yeah. Someone's saying, where, where, where's that train the size of a dime? Oops. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking with Bonnie Lake and Bobby Pring, and we're talking about Jack Jenny. You're listening to WKCR-FM in New York. 
89.9 on your FM dial. Lauren Schoenberg with you at two minutes after two. We have another hour left as we continue listening to Jack Jenny and related topics and getting some real insight on a great period of music from some two folks who were there and can tell us about it. Right now I'd like to play the rare title that uh, it wasn't on this original tape that I found out at uh, Rutgers uh, on Variety Records. And this is the uh, third title from the um, Johnny Williams thing. And it's great. Uh, those collectors out there might be familiar with a rare Chicago record session called the Collector's Item Cats with Wild Bill Davis and Boyce Brown where they do a boogie-woogie version of I Surrender Deer. And uh, this is reminds me of that. This is a boogie-woogie version of one of Gershwin's very first hits after Swanee. And this is... I'll build a stairway to paradise with Jack Jenny, boogie woogie style. That's great, isn't it? Yeah, I like cool. that. That's yeah. fun. Yeah, Claude Thornhill on piano, Babe Russin on the tenor, Jack Jenny on the trombone with drummer Johnny Williams and a boogie-woogie version of I'll Build a Stairway to Paradise. <laughs> Who would have thought? Going on to seven minutes after two right now, we're just about to get into a deep set of uh, Jack Jenny recordings under his own name. But before we do, let's hear one more from uh, one of the studio sessions he did. This is with Dick McDonough, the great guitarist, one of his last sessions. And uh, we'll hear a beautiful tune called That Old Feeling with a vocal by your, by someone who's a friend of yours, Howard Phillips. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
saw you last night and got that old feeling. When you came in sight, I got that old feeling. The moment that you danced by, I felt a thrill. And when you caught my eye, my heart stood still. Once again, I seemed to feel that old. And I knew the spark of love was still burning. There'll be no new romance for me. It's foolish to start for that old feeling is still in my heart. <laughs> You have a story for us? Yeah, about Count Basie. Oh, you just mentioned sure. We were, we, we were talking about the all the great music from that era that uh, that went out over the air that wasn't captured, and I mentioned, among other things, I'd give my right arm, well, maybe my left arm, uh, for some more Count Basie recordings with Lester Young, and that brought up a story from Bonnie. I was in California, and, uh, oh, I don't know, just a few years ago, and Calvin Jackson called me. I had done some work with Calvin. And he said, Count Basie's playing at the San Diego College University, and would I go? And I said, certainly. And we went, and we were downstairs where the musicians were, and we were going to sit on the stage in the wings, so we'd be right near the bandstand. And Count Basie came in, and I said, I have to thank you for one of the greatest moments I ever had in my life. This was a the, one of the dearest men in the world, you know. He was so sweet. He said, I'm honored. What did I do? I said, I was married to Jack Jenny, and we were playing at the Chase Hotel in St. Louis, and you had a one-nighter at the auditorium. And we cut one set and went over to, to, to hear you, and we were standing in the wings, and when we walked in, we were, stand, as we were just standing there listening, Without one motion from you, your back was to us. We were behind you. Uh, without one indication, the whole band went into, stood up and played a whole version of Jack's whole record of Stardust. Mm. And I said, we just stood there and cried. The tears running down our face. And then you got turned around. He said, oh, I remember every minute of that. It was one of the greatest moments I've ever had and that my band ever had. We were thrilled to death. And he came back and got both of us and took us out on stage. And the, and the audience went wild. Oh, that's, that's marvelous. Isn't that a wonderful yes. tribute to him? <laughs> yes, it is. We're talking with Bonnie Lake and Bobby Pring about the great trombonist Jack Jenny. It's 12 minutes after the hour of 2 o'clock. And we're just about to go into an extended series of Jack Jenny recordings under his own name for the... Vocalion label starting in January 1938. If I'm not mistaken, I think Gene Krupa sat in on the the band's first recording session. Yeah, studio men and the Toots Mandelos on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a tenor man, Artie Trellinger. Yeah. It's, I think Simon's always talking about one of yes. the unsung <laughs> tenor players that was never heard enough. Yes. We'll listen to these recordings of his own orchestra. Let's listen to 
uh, three of them, and then we'll come back and talk with Bobby and uh, and with Bonnie Lake about them. Swinging the Apache, The Night is Blue, two takes, and I've gone romantic on you with a vocal- vocalist by one Adelaide Moffat. Okay, Jack Jenny is orchestra, January 1938. Thank you. 
tree You recall the picture dear to me Your dress is another But your smile is still your mother's In the shade of the new apple tree So you bob your head for your knee Though the world is new and fancy free The old moon's above you But the weirds are still I love you In the shade of the new apple tree Gone are all the bonnets and doors That set one car to play Gone are the hoops and the bustles and the skirts But the kiss is just the same Hey, Nani, oh, Nani, oh, no, we haven't advanced, you see, in the shade of the new apple tree. quite a fine record session. Jack Jenny and his band recording for Vocalion Records January 4th, 1938. Sitting in on drums, his old friend from the Mal Hallett band, Gene Krupa. Swinging the Apache, The Night is Blue, two takes. I've gone romantic on you and in the shade of the new apple tree. I've heard worse vocals. Oh. The best Adelaide Moffitt. Bobby had an interesting little coda to her story. Oh, Adelaide was a uh, New York socialite. And... Uh not too many years ago, in the Daily News, there was a picture of this uh, elderly lady with mm-hmm. her cat. And I, I looked at the uh, article, and it was Adelaide Moffat, who oh. was now living in Florida and was being evicted from her uh, pad for non payment. Oh, oh, <laughs> kind of a that's tragic a ending. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, was it around this time that he actually started his own band as a viable working thing, or, or, or was it? 1939 is when he started. Mm-hmm. And when did you meet? That's when I joined. That's when you joined him. Well, I'd like to ask Bonnie Lake, who was married to Jack Jenny and the marvelous composer arranger, in her own right. Uh, how did that happen? How did you wind up with Jack Jenny? And when did you first meet him and and become aware of of, of the name Jack Jenny? When I met him. And I was at a party, and someone asked me to play and sing, and I did. And um, he sat next to me at the piano and asked me to play some things over, and I did. And he wanted to know what I was doing, and he asked me if I would join his band. And I did. Just like that? Yeah. When was that? In, in, in 30, 1939. 1939. What was the band doing at that point? What, what, what kind of work? Well, Same they were as all the other bands? out of the beach somewhere, and he had a girl vocalist, the girl who had been recording with her, with him. What's her name, Bobby? Meredith Blake? No. Oh, Lucille Manners? Yes, Lucille oh. Manners. Yeah. So the first job after that was at the Ritz-Carlton in Boston. Mm, that's quite a gig. Yeah, mm-hmm. and from there we went to the Brooklyn Roseland and I, <laughs> two two ends of different ends of the pole, you know. Yeah, who was in the band? Can you remember? I mean, I know it's many Very many few. years ago, but who were some that. of the people that stick out in your mind? Uh, Iggy Shivak. Iggy Shivak, the bassist. Yes, and what's his name? The, uh, the drummer. drummer. Oh, Paul Richter was yeah, the drummer. Paul Richter, yeah, Paul Richter. Yeah, Rudy Novak. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I can Bob see their faces, Jay. but I, I can't mm-hmm. always remember all their names. Who was writing for the band, the arrangements and things? Hugo you? Winterhalter. He was oh, Hugo Winterhalter, yeah. marvelous writer. Yeah, he was playing bass clarinet then. I see. He's a lovely man. You mentioned that the later theme of the band, City Lights, was that the name of it, or City Nights? City uh, City Night. Yeah. What, was City was, Night was written by Alec Wilder. Yes. Alec Wilder. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alec wrote that. What, was Alec friends with Jack? Oh, very good friends. We were all good friends. Yeah. How could you be friends in those years? Um, everyone was out on the road. I know. I can just imagine when you were out on the road locations, this band is here. When, when, when did you actually get to, to see each other? 
what was there a time of year when bands came back to town or we met each other on the road sometimes the road we'd follow too. each other in different places well, when jack and i got married in san francisco jack was with the um Artie shaw band and at the same time the hair uh, the harry james band was there and the bob crosby band oh. so we all met every single night you know in the local pub <laughs> and then in the daytime we were all out in the park playing ball Oh, that must have been something. Oh, yes, wonderful. I took some pictures of that. Oh. And uh, so we just, we uh, it was a family. Yeah. I that, spent my honeymoon with Muggsy Spanier and just Stacy <laughs> <laughs> and all those fellas, you know. Yeah. Why we not? had a lot of fun. I'm that, sure. that meeting together after the, the job, and uh -huh. it always reminds me of a famous line, tonight I'm going to bed early. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, nobody ever made it. Line. And if we were on the road and we'd run into different bands, like they'd be playing, there'd be two or three bands in a town, like St. Louis or something like that. We run a Joe Venuti's band and like that, you know. Yeah, we're talking with Bonnie Lake and Bobby Pring about the great trombonist Jack Jenny, who, although he's been gone now over forty years, uh, still commands tremendous respect within the music business and people who know his name and know his work. We're hoping to turn some more of you on to Jack Jenny through this extensive airing of his recorded works. And again, first-hand knowledge and reminiscences from Bonnie Lake and from a geniophile, Bobby Pring, who's a big, uh, more than a fan of, of Jack Jenny's and a marvelous trombonist in his own right. 28 minutes before the hour of 3 o'clock, and as we plow ahead, let's hear some music now from Je Let's see. April 11th, 1939, What More Can I Give You and Got No Time. Now, were these vocalions, too? Yeah. Okay, these are commercial recordings. And then, while we hear just a little bit of music from a, what I, looks to be a rare radio broadcast of June 23rd, 1939, uh, I Surrender Dear and Is It Possible? So, with vocalist Lu Lucille Matthews, who, uh, who was with the band, I guess, before Bonnie got there. So let's listen to four tracks. We'll listen to four tracks from Jack Jenny again. Some rarities, Bobby. I'm sorry. Uh, Go the, ahead. Uh, what's, what are the first two? Tunes? Uh, what more can I give you? And got no time. Yeah, on that same session, I found out there there was uh, a two-sided thing called "Boys Take Five, A and B, which was never released. Really? Uh, I'd love to hear that sometime. Yeah. I, I gather from the title, I have a hunch it's one of those things where everybody gets to blow. Yeah. Two sides. Yeah. yeah. yeah that would be marvelous to find. And he, I don't think he ever did anything like that after. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, we'll have to scour the archives for it. Ask our good friend Jerry Valburn, who has all many rare recordings. Maybe he has that lying around somewhere. Some more Jack Jenny for you. Again, we're focusing on the beautiful, effortless, but effortless not in the sense that he didn't <laughs> take any, any uh, effort to do it, but uh, it sounds that way. Jack Jenny on the trombone, 1939. Thank you. 
Jenny presents Lucille Manor in a selection from the current show Streets of Paris called Is It Possible?
and sweet music, a melody for your memory book. Moon glow. Good drummer, good charts, and a great trombone there by uh, Jack Jenny. We're listening to some very rare material broadcast from June 23rd, 1939. And again, Bonnie Lake has been more than gracious with letting us uh, listen to these rare recordings and, and then sharing her time with us. And uh, but not, We're not at the end of the show yet, but uh, just in case I don't at the end, I want to make sure I thank Bonnie for coming up and spending this time and saying I look forward to seeing you again in a few weeks. It's lovely to be here. Thank you. We will come back and, and, and pick up right where we're leaving off with Jack Jenny with this very rare and marvelous material. Also, Bobby Pring, who is no stranger to these airwaves, although it's, I think it's been a while since you've been up. Uh, yes, it Was is. the last time that uh, two trombone thing with Effie Resnick? With Effie, yeah. That yeah, was five years ago. Is it? Five years? <laughs> time Good flies. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Bob, Bob's here, and we're doing this show on Jack Jenny. I'd like to thank everyone for the lovely phone calls. And we're going to go out with two recordings, one featuring our guest, Bonnie Lake, as a vocalist with the great Artie Shaw Band. And to many people, this was one of the greatest of Shaw's bands. I mean, on lead trumpet, you had... Uh, uh, you had... Uh, oh, 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 you oh, you were with that band. 
down in the right hand corner. He's yes. He yes, 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 Billy yes. Butterfield Billy Butterfield. Yes, yes. Imagine Billy Butterfield playing lead trumpet and Les Robinson on lead alto. I mean, what a, oh, it was a singing, band. singing band that These must have been. These were taken off the air, I believe, uh, when we did Steel Pier, when we played a Steel Pier. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is uh, Bonnie Lake as a vocalist with the Artie Shaw band with her husband, Jack Jenny, who was in the band. And the one and only Artie Shaw. And we'll hear Time Was, and then we'll follow that with uh, the Pièce de Résistance, one of mm. several versions of Jack Jenny playing Stardust for you. And then we'll come back and say goodbye and uh, see you soon. So stay tuned, Bonnie Lake and Jack Jenny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Jack Jenny and his very famous version of Stardust from 1939. After that, I should say before that, we heard Bonnie Lake and Artie Shaw and Time Was. I'd like to thank Bonnie Lake and Bobby Pring for being my guests this afternoon and the music of Jack Jenny. We'll be back two weeks from today. Mark your calendars. I guess that's the 14th, if I'm not mistaken. I think today's the second. All right. So that would be two weeks from today with more music of Jack Jenny. See you then. Delighted. Okay. Yes, yes, thank you. Carry on, folks. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned for afternoon music with Ted Pankin. This is WKCR FM in New York, eighty-nine point nine on your FM dial.